Okay, uh, so um, I'm going to start uh, the session. Uh, just going to go through all the things that we have to start. Uh, we talked about uh, um, all the uh, do and don'ts and what we're going to do uh, throughout the semester. So we have all those information. Uh, before we, we begin, um, uh, do, does anybody have any question or anything you want to talk about? Any questions? Let me see if I can write over here. So, any questions? Ali, go ahead. Three people. Three people. Now it's only, uh, what? How? How can it be two? It was three the last time that I that I go through. Even if it's one person, we have to do it like this. It's. Uh, I don't, sure, I'll do it. I'll do it again. There's no problem with it. Uh, I'll post. Uh, I'll do it when I go home. I'm not going to do it now because only only 17 people over here. And um, uh, but we'll see what happens. Um, um, uh, you'll yeah yeah. So you'll see. Well, I'm going to count it again, and we'll see what happens if if everybody unanimously say that um, uh, we can do it two hours later at uh, seven o'clock, seven to nine. That believe me, that's not my choice. I don't want to do that because <laughs> uh, um, that means I'm going to miss being with my family. I have to, uh, to work till nine o'clock at night. Like this, at least I'm getting home by eight. So, so it's not better for me, but it's better for students. So, I'm, uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what what we're going to do. Okay. Also, let me see if I can share my. Uh, there you go. Here I am, and that's awful lighting. So, I look like uh, I don't know, just a. <laughs> So I think I should turn that thing off too. Um, there we go. Not the best thing to show the thing because the light is right above my head. <laughs> Anyways, um, so sure, Ali, I'll do that and uh, we'll see what we can do. So, um, uh, and now we're going to go uh, start the session. So let's start the day. Uh, Visual Studio 2022, always use this app, so let's change it to that one. <clears throat> Hopefully everything's going to work fine. Also, oh, it went to the other screen, let me bring it down. <clears throat> it's loading something, there we go. Yeah, at home, I have uh, everything set up over there. The past two years to be optimized for the, for online learning over here. If you see this room, you'll need, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> Anyways, uh, um, let me bring this up. All right. Okay, so <coughs> let's start. Um, uh, what uh, I will do over here today is to go through concepts as quick as I can to uh, to be able to go through all the little things that we need to know about OP345, about C++, um, to kind of be able to start um, the things that are important. Uh, these are the kind of fill in the blanks at the moment type of a thing. So when we are talking about <clears throat> the concept right now, it's going to be kind of a fill in, fill in the blank. We talked about object orientation. We talked about encapsulation, inherit inheritance, and uh, polymorphism to understand exactly how they work. <clears throat> we talked about modularity. I, ta I showed you that the compiler and how the compiler works in a sequence of things. Um, uh, um, now, um, um, did we, uh, let me just put this thing over here on the side so I can do my polling quicker. All right, so uh, did we uh, talk about 
uh, linkage last time. Did we talk about linkage? All right, so let's, um, um, uh, Lindin says yes. <laughs> All right, um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go through it anyway very quickly, and uh, many people are saying no, so, uh, uh, so I'm going to go through it anyway. So uh, when we are talking about uh, 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 a linkage, we are essentially talking about scopes okay to 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 um, understand exactly what we mean when we say scope let's uh, deal with it um, like this so let's say I have a couple of modules so I'm gonna actually bring uh, some code over here so I can actually <coughs> show you exactly what it means so When we are talking about uh, scope, uh, this is what we actually mean. So um, everybody can see the screen properly, hopefully. Let me, I have very small real estate. I just want to make sure that I have everything in front of me. All right. Uh, Yeah, so uh, when we are talking about scope, uh, this is essentially where um, objects are visible. When we talk about scope, any variable created within uh, a, an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket of, uh, a, of uh, um, a function, it has a function scope, it comes to life over there and it dies. If within the subscope of that function, the same variable is is created this variable temporarily at that moment shadows the va the the value that you have over here now that that is what we call shadowing which is essentially shadowing a function is shadowing a variable it doesn't apply only to functions and inner scopes even if in your class you have a variable uh, a member variable and in functions you, in methods of that class you create a variable you are essentially shadowing the values looking at the module every single member variable you create within a module is called a class scope the class essentially the a class scope variable is essentially it could be named as an, a global variable for all the members of that class so any member function of the class has access to that one and that's why we call that uh, uh, um, a class scope a global scope uh, a file scope is a variable that uh, is identified within a translation unit. So essentially in one module, when you create a variable, in C language we used to call this global, that's not correct. These are just file scope variable and they are uh, identified and, and visible within the module of that scope. If you have a, a file scope variable and you want to make it accessible to all the modules of the system, essentially making it uh, global that's when you use extern so essentially you create the variable inside variable object class and instance whatever that you create you create it is as a file var uh, file scope variable and then in the header file of that module what you do is uh, uh, creating uh, an extern with the exact same name and type and it makes it global for any module, any other module that is including this header file. And this essentially becomes uh, 
what we call an external linkage. So uh, uh, when, you, when, when we are talking about external linkage is this one. You create something like this and what you see is an external linkage. An internal uh, linkage is the one that is, a, is like a file scope that is within the translation unit and uh, uh, and if you just create a variable within a scope, then there is no uh, linkage whatsoever for that variable. Um, are we okay with this? All right. The next thing we need to know is about like uh, the, uh, understanding uh, what uh, 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 header files are and when, when you are actually including a header file what happens to that header file. Uh, a header uh, inclusion, uh, preprocessor directives, uh, better to say all the preprocessor directives that you have within your application, preprocessor directives are nothing but uh, commands to the compiler. So anything that you do within your uh, uh, compiler, uh, the I'll just remove these. Anything you do within your uh, your uh, uh, your code, anything that you start with hashtag essentially talks with the compiler, tells to the compiler what to do before compilation begins. To give an example for that, I do something that is kind of uh, nuts. So what I do is something like this. I create a file that the name is completely crazy. As you see over here, it says ehu.abc. If you look at the value of this file, the value of this file is essentially include IO stream using namespace and an int min and nothing else. So it's an empty thing. And then when I create another file, I call it huhu.def. And this file, when you look at it, it is a C out and it says what the heck and a return. So if you look at it, half of the application uh, function is written in here, left alone. The other half is written over here. When I actually go inside my program now, what I can do is this. Take a look. When I bring the program up in my program, see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to write two include statements. So I'm telling to the compiler before compiling this code of mine, bring these two files in. And these two files are nothing but the beginning at the end of this function that I have written. And if you compile this code, you will see that everything works perfectly, although really it doesn't mean anything. It, it's just the two, two lines of include and uh, uh, bringing uh, uh, two pieces of uh, uh, function and kind of stitch it together. As you see, it, it actually executes what the heck. So what happens over here is that when this include happens, it gets the content of ABC and pastes it over here. So essentially it brings this one and that include gets uh, executed by the compiler doing this. And the second include gets these value, these values, and replace the second include with it. And therefore, we're going to have a complete program. So includes, ladies and gentlemen, are nothing but copying and pasting a sort code into your CPP file. Remember that this is a very important thing to know. Are we okay with this? All right, so uh, before we continue, I'm going to do something in here. Um, let me just stop this. Don't save. Just out of curiosity, and I'm going to make this poll anonymous over here. So uh, I'm going to make it an anonymous poll. So this one is an anonymous one. You can feel free to answer. Um, to see if it's good. And I see two people over here, Siwak and Tenor. They are logged in as uh, listen only. That doesn't happen in my class, okay? You must have a microphone and be able to answer questions if needed. 
okay so remember that never ever you can come to my class and listen only uh, that's number one number two just out of curiosity and this is an anonymous poll I just want to know for people who are actually coming to class I want to know oh well, see back is gone <laughs> let him come back in sorry because there we go all right thank you uh, all right so now uh, that see uh, uh, is back in let's uh, um, ask the question from people who are right now in class joining how many people are okay to move the class to seven o'clock till nine I just want to check to see uh, like people who are actually coming to class what they're what All right. All right. So six people are not still answering the poll. So the question is, would you like the class to be moved to seven to nine on Mondays? so I can do this from home with better equipment. I just want to uh, show Ali something so he's, um, he's okay. And now everything is done. Now take a look. So you see Ali? Uh, two people are saying no. So we can't have it. It has to be here. Okay? Don't don't blame me. Don't tell don't, don't don't tell me that I didn't try. I just showed you from 19 people that are here right now. Two people are telling me telling me that we don't want to move it. We want to have it th at this time. Okay. All right. All right. So my anonymous poll is off now. All right. So uh, let's continue. Uh, let's talk about um, static variables to understand exactly what static variables are and how they how they work and uh, when we are talking about when you are talking about uh, types of uh, uh, linking and executing your program you have to first understand how the variables that you're dealing with are actually managed in memory so we have two different types of of uh, of memory, ma like, uh, let's put it um, uh, th uh, three different types. So we have a compile time that w w when a compiler actually, uh, when, when uh, linking is happening, we have three stages of compile time. We have a compile time, we have a link time, and we have a runtime. I already showed you how compiler runs. Um, um, let me just bring the, the image up one more time so we can uh, kind of uh, see it when I'm talking about it um, pa, 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 pa. all right so this is what I am talking about so we said that when we are deal when, when when actually we are doing or when we are dealing with uh, 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 lifetime of an application a lifetime of an application goes in three times we have compile time which is essentially the first four things that you see over here which the modules are getting compiled one by one they get trans so each uh, uh, module that is getting compiled at each stage of compilation that's a translation unit so essentially at this moment compiler runs once compiler runs twice compiler runs th three times and four times and you're gonna have four object files created out of the compiler that is running then there comes the link link time which essentially checks to make sure that all the things that you put over here the relations and your linkages are made and done proper and nothing it no we don't have a broken linkage over here if that's the case then link that the linker creates an executable combining all these things together and there comes the time for running your application you set aside your compiler you execute your program and that's when you're gonna have the runtime are we okay with understanding what uh, compile time, link time, 
and what uh, runtime is. So my question is, when you uh, have, uh, so let me just uh, publish that poll and be done with it. So my question is, when you create a class called employee, and you misspell it when you are initial when you are instantiating. So, or let's say you have integer, you want to create a variable integer. You you write the integer with a capital I instead of uh, a lowercase I. If that's the case, which stage of programming you gotta get an error? JP. So when you have you have you want to create an integer, instead of writing lowercase i n t, you write capital I N T I instead of lowercase. Which stage you're gonna get error? Compile time, runtime, or link time? Perfect, exactly. Compile time is the answer because the the compiler cannot translate that type into an uh, a variable. Now let's say in module number three, and this is where uh, uh, Carmen's gonna answer the question. Let's say in module number three, um, in module number two, I have a function called, um, in module number two, I am calling, um, 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 no, let me, let me create, uh, make the question uh, correct. One more time. Let's say in module number three, I am calling a function foo that is supposed to be in module number two. So in the header file of module number two, I actually have a function called foo. So what I'm saying is that in here, I have a prototype for a function that's a little too uh, small. So let's say in here I have a, a prototype of a function called foo. Okay? And in this one I am calling the function foo. Okay? But in the CP, first of all, if I do something like this, Carmen, if I do something like this, will I get an error when module number three is being compiled? I have a prototype in the header file called foo, and yes, as you see, there is this red thingy over here. So, so not on compile time, will not got to get an error. So when, but let's say in CPP file over here, I do not have a foo. I forgot to actually set over here what foo is. So in here, I don't have a foo. If that's the case, case, do I get an error at all, Carmen? Link time. Thank you very much. So I'm going to get it at link time and that type of error, which means the promise that I made, I did not keep that's the linker error. Now, another one. And this time, let me just uh, clear all. This time I am going to, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, let me stop drawing over here. This time what I'm going to do will be, okay, Henley is going to answer the question. Now let's say I create uh, a pointer called p inside this cpp file that I have, okay? And without allocating any value into it, I, so essentially in this p I have something like this. So if I have something like this in module number three, if I have integer pointer p, and then somewhere else in the application, I write target of P is set to 25. 
Okay? If that's the case, will I get an error? If yes, is it on compile time, link time, or runtime? Henley. No. So I, I create a pointer called P without allocating any memory. So in here, I should have some place saying P is set to new int, but I forgot to do that. So let's say this is not there. I forgot to do this. And then I say target of P is 25. Which stage first, will I get an error? Secondly, which stage, compile time, link time, or runtime? And if you, if you don't want to answer, you can say pass. Remember that. Actually, no. Compiler has no way to know that you didn't do this. So this is a promise that you, are ma that you made, and, and, and compiler has no idea if you did that or not. The only way that compiler, actually compiler will compile it just fine. It's going to say, I have a pointer, now put 25 in target of P. But you did not set the P to be to a target in a target, so your program has to get executed while executing, while running. It will crash, and it will give you a segmentation fault. Got it? All right, so this is called runtime error. So what is runtime error? Is where the syntax and everything looks fine, but you have a logical error that you did not provide resource for a part that you have. Therefore, at runtime, program crashes, and that's what we call a runtime error. So again, if syntax is bad, that's compile time. If you make a promise you don't keep it, that's linker time. If you have some kind of a out resource that you promise you are going to provide it to your application, but you didn't, like dynamic memory allocation, like a file you were supposed to open, but you didn't, and you start writing, things like that, the compiler has no way to know if you made a mistake or not. So it runs, and that's when operating system is going to stop you and tell you you have uh, <coughs> some error in your... Uh, uh, application during runtime. Uh, are we okay with this? All right. So, so now that we know that, uh, let me just uh, go through the look at the next one. Yeah. So, this is what we call statically allocated memory or dynamically allocated memory and, and understand exactly what does it mean to have a statically allocated memory or a dynamic allocated memory. So let me just delete this. A statically, statistically allocated memory is a memory that gets cre uh, requested by compiler and compiler adds that one <clears throat> dueling compilation in your program. So when you have a program over here in your program, you write integer A, and this integer A of yours actually tells to the compiler that, hey, I have, uh, I need an integer, or so, and I need an integer. Compiler actually puts an integer within your executable, and it's there. And it's going to actually, uh, um, get loaded into the memory within your executable and that's a statistically statistically allocated memory okay statically not statistically <laughs> statically allocated memory now if i say over say a thousand now size of 999 integers will be added to the size of your executable so when you compile this your program your program gets bigger this is called statically allocated memory. Are we statically allocated memory? Are we okay with this? Another choice for this is to actually allocate the memory dynamically. So which means, so statistic, statically, <laughs> my, I cannot mention it. So for some reason, my tongue is getting uh, numb over here. So statically allocated memory is something that if you do something wrong with it, you're going to get a compile time error. 
but if I say over here integer pointer a and I say a is set to new int 1000 then the size of my map size of my application will not change at all this application will remain with the same size and during the execution it's going to request uh, 1000 integers from memory to be actually assigned to uh, to be occupied and the address will be put in a and therefore if anything goes wrong with this it's going to happen at runtime are we okay with this All right. Azusa, are you with me? <laughs> no problem. All right. So that's that. Uh, when dealing about memory, you have three different types of segment that you have. Uh, so you have a code segment, you have data segments, you have stack segments, and you have heaps up segment. Okay, so when we are talking about code segment uh, and uh, uh, data segment, these are these are uh, 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 the code segment uh, is the memory in which the instructions of your application will go into. So when you look at, if you look at the memory when your pro executable go in there, these instructions that you see that is translated into computer uh, 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 language resides somewhere in memory. This code is the one that actually sits in code segment. The variable that you create over here sits in data segment and it survives the lifetime of the program, which means as pro when the program runs, that's going to stay over there and it's always going to be there. Okay. Now, uh, global variables and things like that or literal values that you put like when you put when you write something like uh, when you write something like integer a uh, integer b is equal to one two three four five this actually sits in data segment so the literal values and uh, uh, global values that you have um, uh, constant values that you have will actually reside in data segment. The stack segment are the parts that you actually create local variables. So if I create over here something like integer foo, a function that I have, and uh, I write over here integer x, okay, this x of mine over here, uh, and this a and this b, these are going to get in the se uh, created in the uh, stack segment. So if the values that you create are too much, or if by mistake I call a function in itself, so if I do something like this, so I do an, uh, a recursive call by mistake, the function keeps calling itself and it keeps creating integer x in the stack. So it's going to keep pushing the integer value in the program waiting for, for foo to end, but foo keeps calling itself. And because of that, you're going to get a stack overflow, which means it keeps creating the integer in the stack and it, and it crashes. Stack is... Uh, um, um, a place that the operating system gives to a program and it has certain limit that you can have values in it. It's not uh, the, the size of the memory. It, you ha everybody has a quota for it. The heap segment is a segment where all the dynamic memory allocations that you ask, all the resources that you ask compiler to give to you on uh, compiler uh, wants to, uh, you ask compiler to give you at runtime they get created over there and those are the dynamic values that you do so these 1000 integers will go to the heap segment are we okay with uh, the four segments of memory all right and so, uh, C++ um, when we are talking about, uh, like we talked about scopes, where we know the building blocks of the application, what are the scopes? When we say block scope, what do we talk about? When we say class scope, global scope, shadowing, all these things, we went through it, so we know what it is. Linkages, external linkage, how do we use to do all those uh, uh, variable decorations? We, uh, we talk about it, we talked about it. 
Another thing that we need to know about variables that is uh, uh, kind of new in OP345 and we don't know it from OP244. Let me just uh, put this thing, I'm going to call it uh, um, 02. Or actually, let's start with, um, yeah, I'm going to call it for now 02. This one was, it was uh, segments. CPP mem segments. All right, all right. So another thing that you need to know is a type of variable that uh, uh, we call it internal linkage. Like um, you, you can create a variable. This that this variable remains in memory while your program runs. So we you know we know that we have global variables. A global variable is a variable that is accessible everywhere. So the lifetime of a global variable is essentially the life the 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 the, uh, the time is the time that your program is running in memory. When your program ends, the global variables die. Um, are we okay with this? So we know the lifetime of a global variable is that. The lifetime of uh, uh, a block scope variable is the block that it's running into. So if I have function foo over here, and in here I have integer a, and I'm going to go for, I don't know, um, or I'm going to say while. Yeah, let's put over here, say 10. And I'm going to say while a minus minus, and I'm going to go over here, c out a. And uh, when I write this program, this integer a exists only when foo is in action. So if I call foo over here, a comes to being when foo is executing. And as soon as the scope of a foo is over, a dies. So essentially, a lives right after line four and dies right before line six. That's called file scope. Do we understand that? But you can create a specific type of variable that is very useful, that remains alive. It gets created the very first time its block is, in, is, is exit. So it's essentially, it gets, it gets created when your program runs. Nishit and Henley, I don't get response from you, but uh, make sure that you, you're with me. Okay. Uh, so, yes. A is block scope. Did I say file scope? My apologies. <laughs> My apologies. So it's a block scope. My apologies. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, we have another type of variable that when you create this type of variable, actually, let me just set this, change this thing to a comma or a space. And in here, I'm going to go see out, and though I don't want to be too long. So in here, I create a variable integer a, okay, and I'm going to initialize it to one. Now in here, I'm going to say a plus plus, and I'm going to say c out a. And I'm going to put a space. So if I run this pro, if I actually, um, and this is far, right? So if in here, if I say for integer i set to 0, i less than 10, and i plus plus, and in here, I call the function fa, every single time fa is created, for we know what happens. A gets created, it's recreased, it comes out, a dies. For fa, when a gets created, it will be initialized to 1 every single time. 1 will be added to it, and therefore the output's going to be 2, and it's going to print 2 10 times, and then it's going to go to new life. So if I run the program, this is what's going to happen. Oh, build errors. <laughs> Let's see what's going on in here. Oh, uh, I, I should I should actually <laughs> um, write the prototypes for it. By the way, that was linker error. Void fa, void foo. That's better. Run it one more time. 
okay so as you see the other one goes 987 goes up to 0 and stops and this one simply prints 2 why because every single time a is created initialized to 1 and adds, it's added by 1 and it's printed and it keeps going like that do we understand what happened right now are we okay with this down to this point now there is something we can do over here to make this Nishit, are we okay? All right. So now, yes. Uh, if you just reply to the poll, it's fine. But um, activate your microphone and talk anytime you want, it's fine. And by the way, I, uh, because uh, let, me, let me ask another question before we go. How many of you had OP244 with me? Say yes. Okay, for those who did not have, uh, uh, and, and most of you did not, Pooh, interesting. So, what I want to tell you is that you, when you have a question, you activate your microphone and you talk, okay? Don't raise hand or type something in a message. I do not have anything. I, so, this is what I have in here. Take a look. I don't even see these public chats. So, if you ask the question or said something over there, I don't see it, okay? And I only have over here two monitors, so I can't see exactly what's happening. So, uh, um, so please, if you want to say something, activate your microphone and talk. Do not put anything in public chat. And I just see somebody else put something over there, and that's 11. I have no idea what it is. Let me just see what people are saying over here. Oh. <laughs> party <laughs> yeah Car Carmen let's oh so these are all my polls and some people say can you repeat that you lagged a little bit oh so those things out so if if you do that please if you don't hear me don't say that um, and lagging uh, um, I do, uh, later on you can listen to the uh, audio um, the, the, the lecture because I'm recording it um, if anything lags it's gonna lag in the recording of big blue button too but the local recording will be fine uh, and uh, just activate your microphone say, say sorry I didn't hear you please um, uh, repeat okay uh, let's do that please are, are we okay with this let me bring it back up over here so I'm gonna actually make something at home so I can bring a dual monitor thing over here and carry it and put it so I can have three monitors I'll th yes you don't see the polls is it uh, do you have uh, full screen setup is it on full screen oh yeah probably that's the reason so uh, if that's the case uh, uh, if you see me saying that just activate your microphone and say yes or no <laughs> when you go full screen uh, this is something that I actually um, uh, f uh, opened a bug long time ago with uh, blindside networks on it that when you put full screen you don't see the polls um, I don't know why. Sorry about that, Nishit. <laughs> yeah, just activate your microphone, say yes, no. Okay. So, uh, what am I saying? So, if I hear two yeses from microphone and I see two people did not respond, then I'm happy. <laughs> All right. So, um, so where were we? Yeah. Uh, let's come back in here. Yeah, so now we are, when we back over here, we can actually make this A's lifetime to become lifetime of the program. So the first time FO is called, so first of all, when you compile your program, A of FO will be created. The first time FO is called, it will be initialized to, to 1. And then it's going to keep its value even when you leave the function. When you come back, it's going to continue where it's left off. That is called static. So when you have a static variable created inside your application, uh, inside your function, that's what happens. Remember last time it was all twos? When I run this one, see what's going to happen now. Now you have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the first time it actually encounters, it initializes it. 
it gets created right when the program gets created and then it keeps the value and it will never forget it do we understand so don't be mis don't confuse this static variables with statically with the statically uh, allocated memory statically allocated memory is any local variable that you have static variables are variables who have a global lifetime but limited scope do we understand this A static variable is that the scope is far. You cannot see that A anywhere other than far. Are we okay with that, Ali? So it's this A is only visible inside far. It has nothing to do with the other A. And you cannot access it outside of far. But its lifetime is the lifetime of a global variable, which means it stays alive. Although not visible, it is always alive. Never dies. It, it, it's useful in many scenarios that I cannot tell you right now because we don't know those things. Like in recursion, it's a beautiful thing to use, but we're not going to talk about it now. Okay? Static, uh, yeah. So are we okay, Ali, with this? Yeah. Go, go, Manoj. Pardon me? Uh... Yeah, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> it's a little confusing for somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, so I said everybody's okay. Lumia said no. Lumia, are you okay? Are we? Do we have a do you have a question? Oh. What is the difference between this so external variable and static variable, right? It, you don't think. You're absolutely right. An external, when you make... So, you, you create a file scope variable, okay? Then you make it external in the header file. You make the file scope variable global, okay? With a static... You go inside the local scope. It's not it's not global at all. Oh, so let's put it this way. So I'm gonna call this one S now. So the the variable S in here is only visible in function fa. No one ever can have access to that S. It is only very accessible here, but it never dies. Got it? Per perfect. All right. Thank you. I like it. I like it. Actually, I, the, the class is going well. I, um, um, I'm happy. Okay. Uh, although short. So uh, I'll try to actually make something at home. L I, later on, I'm going to send this picture to you. So we're going to uh, laugh at a little. That's called problem solving. I have something in my mind. It, it uh, needs a little bit of carpentry, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to create so I can actually have a good uh, thing going in here. So you'll see that soon. Anyways, um, so the next thing we're talking, so it's static thingy when it comes, in C language, that's the extent of static variables. But in C++, static goes much further. So let's see where can we end up with this thing. So I'm going to call this one 03 static variables. <coughs> a static variable, that's a static variable. In a class, story becomes different. So, uh, if we have a static member variable, then the meaning becomes a bit different. So, let's say over here I have uh, a class. I'm going to call that class a container. So, the, the, this class container of mine has, has, has an integer m data. Okay. And in here, I'm going to create an integer. I'm going to call it count. Okay, or CNT. Okay, and in here, I'm going to make this static. Okay. Now in here, I'm going to say uh, public. In here, I'm going to say void a container. And in here, I'm going to say m that. Uh, 
int data set to one, let's say, and I'm going to set m data to data, and I'm wondering why I'm getting an error in here. <laughs> because I said void, can you believe it? I've been off for two months. I forgot C++. My apologies. That's a that's a destructive. <laughs> anyway, so so I have that container that sets the data, and in here I'm going to display the the value of that one. So I'm going to say uh, uh, O stream display, and it's going to be O stream returning O stream reference display. Okay. And uh, in this display, O stream reference OSTR, and it's going to be a const. I'm, actually, I'm not going to make it a const. Should I make it a const? I'm not going to make it a const. Uh, and in this, in this display of mine, what am I doing wrong in here? Has no member display. I am creating the display. Oh. My apologies. Sorry. Uh, it takes a, it takes a while for me to go back to what I want. Anyway, so display now in here. I'm gonna say uh, OSDR, and I'm gonna show the data, and uh, I'm gonna put a space over here, and I'm gonna put something uh, like, uh, and I'm gonna show MCNT, and I'm gonna show tell you exactly what that CNT is and how a static thing is going to work for uh, uh, for uh, for a class so take a look and uh, uh, obviously I'm gonna over here return OSDR we know that there's no question about that okay so now take a look at this in here that CNT is a static variable when it's a static variable we know it's gonna have lifetime uh, it's gonna get created when the program is getting created and the lifetime of it will be lifetime of the program. But isn't each member variable created with every single instance of the class? So when I create a container, doesn't that create that, that thing? Will that one create M data too? So if I have five containers, I'm going to have five M datas. Is that correct assumption? I'm, Lomia, I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about M data, not M C N T. So if I say over here container C ten, I'm gonna have ten M datas, correct? So those people who said no, you're wrong. I will have ten M datas. So let me make it easier. If I create C three over here, what I will have will be three actually. So one is going to, oh, oh <laughs> that's not a good one. Let's create another color. There you go. So this is going to be one instance of container. This is going to be second instance of container. This is going to be the third inst instance of container. So I create three containers. And in each one of these things, I'm going to have an M data. So that's one M data. That's two M datas. And this is three M datas. So it gets created. But because this is static, and as soon as the compiler compiles the code, it gets created, it creates the MCNT like a static variable for a function, but it's going to be actually outside of the, the class. It belongs to the class, not the objects anymore. So this over here will be actually containers MCNT. It's not the members. So when you look at when you look at your code in here, when you say C zero dot dot display, okay. This zero Z C zero dot this and let me uh, 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 set that one to C out so I don't have to type it. Okay, so when you do like this, it will print the display of C0. When you say C1, it displays the data of 
C1. When you display this one, it displays at the M data of C2. But if you say C0, but the C and sorry, but the C and T it is displaying is the one they are sharing with each other. It's not gonna be an individual one. And that's how statics work. So each one of these classes, each one of these classes will have access to the shared integer between them. So if one of them add one to it, the other one will have access. So we can, for example, use this one to see how many instances of something is created. So now if, for example, in here I say M C N T plus plus every single time a container is created a cnt will be added by one and if i actually create a destructor over here i can actually say mcnt minus minus the only question comes up over here is that if it is shared it is one variable shared between all instances of the class then who is going to initialize it can i initialize it in a constructor the answer is no because you don't know which one is doing it that's why you don't know which one is responsible for it which constructor is going to get called because of that what you need to do for a static uh, uh, variable is to actually initialize it outside of the class so essentially you have to say integer container mcnt and then set it to zero so this mcnt essentially gets initialized only once outside of the container and it's shared statically between those things one by one. So when I do that, uh, if I if I do it like this, then it's gonna. Um, uh, let me just uh, set it like this. So I'm gonna uh, assign it to let's say 10, 20, and 30. Okay. So it's gonna be assigned like that, and I'm gonna say C0 dot display. Um, and if I uh, uh, run this program right now, you will see that. it's gonna actually show three. And if I create another one right after over here, if I say, if I say over here container pointer P set to, uh, I'm just gonna do it like this. Now I'm gonna say P is set to new container. In here I'm gonna put 40. Now if I say P display you will see that now it's gonna be uh, five of them uh, four of them as you see and if I delete it if I say delete P over here and go see one dot display you will see that it goes back to three because the destructor of that container that is dynamically created will actually reduce it by one. So if you uh, look at different languages, as you see, it's now three. If you look at different languages, in some languages, they actually call the static variable a shared variable because it's shared between all instances of the class, but that's exactly what it is. Do we understand what a static member variable is now? Evelyn? CWAC, are we okay? All right. If you don't have the, if you don't, if if you don't see the poll, just uh, activate your microphone and say yes. All right. All right. So that's about static uh, member variables, and also 
we could have a static uh, 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 member functions. Uh, that's the next thing that I want to talk about. So I'm going to come over here, uh, put 04, static uh, member variable, static member variables dot cpp clean this up down to this point everybody's okay are we are we okay everybody's okay now down to this point all right so Let me see what I have in my cheat sheet so I can actually bring it over here. Yeah, I do have something. Let me just let me just bring this one in. Um, go ahead, Ali. I, I didn't I do it? In display, I was displaying it, right? Yeah, of course, I did. There you go. I'm adding in the constructor. I'm 3D. <laughs> you can do everything with it. Of course, if it's a const constant static integer, you can't, which I don't understand why you want to do that, but sure, right? But of course you can. All right. Now, it's, now your question is going to actually make sense when we go to uh, uh, static methods. So can somebody tell me what a static method is? Well, sorry, can somebody tell me what a method is? When I say method, what do I mean? If you do. Thank you, a member function, exactly. So a member function, methods, potatoes, potatoes, right? So, uh, say in here, So this is the same thing, and as you see, I have a static integer s, so it's doing the exact same thing. But now in here, I have a function that returns the number of instances, and as you see, it's accessing the s. Okay, and because this function only its its job is only to create to to access the number of instances, I can make that static. But if in here I try to access, for example, value. Um, if I try to access value, if I say over here, for example, C out value, if I do something like this, then I'll be in trouble. Then I'll be in trouble. Or let's actually go back to, I'm going to do the same thing with that container because you already know what the code is. Let me go back. Let's, let me not bring it. I just wanted to. So, just going to copy this, steal it from here, and go back to container. So in this container, I can create a variable, a thing called number of instances, and return MCNT. So it actually returns the, con the, the, return the value. But in here, if I say C out M data, if I do something like this, then I'll be in trouble. Why will I be in trouble? The reason is this now when i create a static method the method is a shared method between the 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 uh, these three instances too so if i actually look at it let's say <clears throat> this becomes the method so the method number of instances is this one because the method is shared between all these three it can only access the static values over here or call the static methods. All the other functions display over here instead of calling CNT can actually return number of uh, uh, instances. So a non-static member uh, function can call a static uh, function, but the other way 
is impossible because there are so many versions which ones you want to call if this one wants to actually call uh, the so for uh, wants to for example access the data which one would it be is it going to be this one oops not that one is it going to be this one or it's going to be this one or it's going to be this one because it cannot decide which one it won't be able to access them so remember a static method cannot access non-static function or member variables but static methods can access static member values are we okay with this all right Good. So we are going so this so it's not accessible. So I'm gonna just comment it over here and say can only access the static members. Now member function, member variable, it doesn't make any difference, but they have to be static. Now, usually when uh, these, these type of things, like why even we need to do something like that? Why do I even care to create a static method? Usually when you create uh, a class that is job is to provide functionality only, like you want to create a, uh, so, and also uh, just, uh, just for you to tell you, uh, you can actually do something like this. So you can actually go C out, C2, uh, instead of C2, you can say C out container number of instances. You can actually do that. You can call a static class, a uh, static method using the class. That's why another name for static variables and static methods is class variable. So if they say we have a class variable, that does this and we have a class method that does this it means you have a static variable uh, member variable and a static method uh, are we okay with this all right so yeah so if you like if you recall in op244 i create a, 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 a class called it utils and we only had utility functions inside that for inside that thing so if it if if you want to do it correctly you have to create a class called utils and all those utility functions should be as static methods inside the utils so it can be used uh, when you are actually uh, using the the methods and that's uh, what is it what it's good for so this is going to be zero four static member functions dot cpp i am not going to um we, we only have 20 minutes left of class so i'm not going to give you any break and we never going to have break in this class because it takes me 20 minutes to get here and set up my stuff and run it uh, so no break for these classes uh, we're just gonna go right to the end hopefully everybody is okay with it are we okay with this, hopefully? All right. Whew. Next thing. What I'm about to tell you right now is not actually um, a C++ thing. It's a C thing, but you never knew that it existed. So... This is what I want to talk about. And also, let me just do something in here before we continue, because this, this is a new install, uh, and it's using tab character, and I hate that. And please, everybody, please see what I'm doing, and always do that with your Visual Studio. So go to Tools, go to Options, go to Text Editor, In there, go to All Languages, click on Tabs. Make sure you have a smart uh, uh, indenting, Tab Size 3, 
indent size 3 and always insert stasis okay do not have keep tabs because when you get your source code from one platform to another the size of tabs th go different so your indentation and your clean code goes bananas so remember set the indenting to smart uh, tab size to three or two even uh, indent size to three and insert spaces do not keep tabs so i'm going to click on ok so this is not good there are not going to be any more tabs in this thing everything's going to be spaces so the next thing i wanted to tell you is this when you write an application, so when you have a command line in here, so command. So um, let me see wh where am I right now. I think it was my dog. I have to change this because it's a uh, open and file folder. And holy schmoly, it's a big path. Copy. So let me cd to where I'm working right now. So I'm going to go, I think I'm in drive D. So I'm going to go D and cd and I'm going to put that. And hopefully I don't have any spaces in here. Let's see if it works. Yeah. So this is, oh, um, so this is where I am in right now. Okay. So if I want to see all, so um, you understand, um, let me just make this a little bigger. Um, properties and font let's make it uh, 20 20 is good okay so when you say dir you understand that dir is a program someone's wrote do we understand this dir is a program we are running are we okay with this now my question is that when it says dir if i if i want to give information to dir dir doesn't ask me to enter information to get it from me what dir does is receiving uh uh xiaofan and carmen are we good i'll probably go into washroom or something anyways so in here if i say dir say star.cpp i just want to do, see the cpp files how did this dir of mine got that cpp that got that entry how do i feed that one into the directory command the answer is that through the function main so the function main of yours the real syntax of function main is not an empty thing over there it actually receives three arguments in in the book that you that you read it says two but there is a third one for some reason they don't talk about it i don't know why first i'm going to talk about the two arguments so you can write your function main function like this int and you call it argc the name is optional but the whole entire universe of c pro c programmers name the first argument of main arc c so please you do the same now the second one is going to be a character pointer an array of character pointers that i'm going to call it arg v so essentially what happens is that when you run your program so the name of our program is 02 september 12. so if i say 02 september 12 and I say this is a test the first thing will be the name of the f that, that I post so the the command line that you see over here it's going to be over here three strings C strings one C string two C strings three C strings four and five so five C strings will be passed away and therefore arc C will be five and these array of character pointers will point to one, two, three, four, and five strings. So in here, I can literally say integer i, uh, sorry, uh, four, integer i set to zero, i less than arg c, and i plus plus. I can simply say c out, arg v i, and one by one, what I have in there will be printed so if i run this program now 
what you're going to see is only one thing because there is no argument so what it's going to print is going to be only one thing give it a second to come up so it's only one thing and it's the name of the executable you see that but if I actually get out of this thing go to the command line and in this not this one go to the command line and go to the debug uh, directory so uh, um, I think it's actually called x64 so if I go cd x64 uh, x64 right yeah x64 because I'm doing a 64 bit if it was uh, uh, x86 it would give you a debug directory but I'm gonna go to that one in he in here oh I don't have it here do I have a debug directory that I'm missing yes I do sorry I'll go to the debug directory and in that debug directory I have the executable file so now in here if I say 0 2 dash September 12 and I hit enter it only gives me that one but if I do that and say this is a test good people of OOP three four five and I hit enter as you see the first one will be the function so if I make it bigger so you can actually see let me run it one more time the first one will be the name then it's going to be this is a test and it keeps going every single token that you pass to it will be passed to the function like that are we okay with this so now you can actually write but these are all strings so if you get numbers and you want to convert them you have to convert them to integers yourself you, you there is no way you can't get anything but strings and that's all you have okay and the third one that you are receiving over in here and for some reason no one ever talks about is the environment so character pointer env so this env is a null terminated array of character pointers which means that env of yours looks like something like this so uh, if this is the, uh, the 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 env array so if this is the env array that points to an array of character pointers So these are the character pointer is pointing to. So that's say one, two, three, four, and it keeps going. Okay. And the first one will point to an environment variable, the second one, third one, fourth one, and the last one. will be null. That's why I said it's a null terminated pointer of arrays, a pointer of uh, 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 character pointers. And each one of these things separately uh, are an environment variable. What are these environment variables? Anything you set in the uh, operating system. So let me show you. So uh, in here I'm showing the uh, let me actually go up, uh, create a new one uh, just for you to see because I don't want the things to get mixed so in here I'm gonna call it zero oh I put two zero fours let's make that one zero five and this one's gonna be zero six arg v uh, arg c arg v.cpp so for next one I'm gonna leave the first two be I'm not gonna do anything with them but in here I'm gonna say this <clears throat> I'm gonna say um, <clears throat> for I uh, integer I set to zero <clears throat> and env I because it's null terminated when the pointer becomes null that's the end of it now I'm gonna say I plus <clears throat> plus and in here I'm gonna print it like that I'm gonna go C out I'm going to say i plus 1, so I'm going to show you a row number, and then in here I'm going to put a dash space, 
and then I'm going to show the environment variable and see what is going to get printed. Get ready for it. It's going to be a big one. <coughs> so if I run the program now, this is what's going to happen. Oh, what happened? Oh, I'm, I'm running the wrong thing. <laughs> Sorry, copy. Um, I have to bring the old one up. Put the old one over here. Take this one over here. Put that one over here. Save it. Get out. Sorry, I, I ran the old one. Renamed the wrong one. So now if I do it, this is what's going to happen. So I have a total of 55 different environment variables and take a look at them, okay? So all user profile is C column backslash program data. App data is user far that data point roaming. And it keeps going like that. So for example, you want to know what is the path set up to? That's the path, take a look. You see that? And you thought that your operating system is Windows 10 and 11? Think again, it's actually Windows NT. <laughs> if you're old as me, you know what Windows NT is. All right. <coughs> OneDrive consumer, who's OneDrive? Where is the OneDrive path? What is the number of processors? So I have eight CPUs on this machine. What is the anything? What is the name of the user? So let's see what is the username in here. Uh, RSTU. There you go. Username is Farda. Okay, you see that? And that's my user profile. So all the things that in your application, in your operating system is set, you can actually find out in here. And that's what we call the EMV, the third one. Um, are we okay with this part? All right, so that's the EMV. ENV, 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 how do I go ENV? Uh, 07, ENV, third, main, argument, dot CPP, and save. All right. Ah. <sighs> So let's see what else we need to talk about today. Whew. Yeah, so uh, I, I put over here an example to, sh to show you why do we need static member functions. Um, and as, I, as I mentioned, as utility thingy I mentioned, so take a look at this name. So I have a name over here, and uh, I am doing a, a dynamic memory allocation for the, na for the class name, and it has allocopy. Do you remember allocopy from last semester that I had in all the OP244 stuff? Remember that allo, allo copy. So allo copy is actually uh, a, a, a function that you create to do the dirty stuff, do dirty work for allo, for dynamic memory allocation. So you don't have to do it over and over. So I have. So whenever I want to do allocation for this thing, uh, I'll get the um, uh, uh, what shall we call it? The 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 source that I want to copy. I delete the value of the data. I do a string link with the source, and I uh, um, and I uh, uh, allocate the memory, put it in the data, and send it out. And this static function of mine puts it back in a reference of a character pointer. So this function of mine has nothing to do with name. It's a utility function that is overall used by name to do whatever it wants to be done, what it wants to do. So I don't have to make this thing as a member uh, function that belongs to the instances of name. 
allocation and copying is something that belongs to the class it's a utility function therefore the syntax becomes like that uh, what is this name that we have display that's m data not name so it makes sense the functionalities that are used as utility and they don't represent a name like if i say oh, what do you think a name should have somebody says allo copy no allo copy has nothing to do with a name a name has its own features in object orientation those are the utility files you are doing to make the engine work and for things like that it's always better to use uh, 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 a static uh, member function uh, are we okay with this? All right. So let's put that one over here. So I'm going to, mm, where's my mouse? Okay, so in here I'm going to say Y uh, 08, Y static member functions there's many many more reasons for it but that's just one thing that uh, uh, comes to mind that I want to tell you uh, that's not important Whew. now let's talk about uh, uh, no we cannot talk about this this is too big of a thing to go through I'm gonna uh, get halfway through it so just uh, to make sure that uh, for the next one I know how far I went let me just uh, uh, think about any questions that you have uh, I'm going to um, just take a note of what needs to talk about the next time so I'm just gonna do this so the next session we have is going to be on uh, Wednesday right can somebody activate the microphone and tell me if it's Wednesday? I don't have the thing. I think Wednesday is the next session, right? Yes, it is. So, so it's it's the fourteenth, right? So, next uh, session will be zero three. I'm just creating something for it to remember that I that's what I'm going to talk about. So zero three September fourteenth. I'm just going to take a note and we're at where I ended so I'm going to paste it there we go okay and that's that all right okay so that's it for today um, um, any questions anyone before we uh, call it the day any question so the day you are coming over here th the next day that you're coming over here is going to be pure lecture we're just going to go through uh, lectures so although it's a lab it's going to be a lecture, okay? If you have any problem with your lab, talk to me on Microsoft Teams uh, uh, and ask questions over there. Um, are we okay with that? Or do we understand this? Yes. And if you don't, study it. It's in the first day. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to OP345. I'll try to catch up, okay? If I see stuff that we know in the lab is like too rich and too difficult to go through, I'll give you extension. So I'll move all the labs later. I, I'm going to go take a look at it now that you mentioned, Ali. I'm going to go take a look at it. If I see I'm not, I'm not covering it the next day you are coming in, we're well, not going to be done, then uh, uh, I'm going to extend it. Be okay with that? All right. Uh, oops, I didn't. Anyways, the, the local is doing, so I'm going to put it on YouTube. Re remind me next time, people, okay? <laughs> remind me. I'm going to post this, but uh, that's why I have a backup. I thought I, I was recording. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, my apologies. Anyways, it's going to be local, so I have the local one. I'm going to post this one, okay? All right. Anyone else? Any questions? Any question, people? Any question? Any question? Do you have any question? Uh, the next day you are coming in? Not tonight. There is no... No. What? what? Did I... Is it somewhere in the curriculum that says that we have a quiz on Monday? 
Okay, where does it say that? I know. Do you know where so I can go remove it? <laughs> oh, okay. Blackboard, I'm going to go over there and fix it. So quizzes are going to be in the lab in person. So you're going to come to quiz in the lab, and I'm going to give you 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you, you have in a lab. Unless I'm behind like now, then I'm going to tell you when. So it's going to be somewhere at the end of the, the, the week. Okay, so quizzes are going to be by announcement uh, on, up, um, up to certain point that we catch up and everything's on time. When we find ground and everything is, because uh, this is the first time that I'm doing hybrid, I have to find out what it, when is a good time, then I'm going to set it up. Other than that, I'm going to tell you in advance, few days, four, three, four days in advance that you're going to have a quiz. We okay with that? Hopefully we are. Okay, good. All right. So if any objections, let me know. Okay. All right, people, have yourself a wonderful day. And uh, I'm going to stop recording. And. Uh